Reading is undoubtedly one of the best tools for personal development out there. From helping us expand our knowledge, personal empowerment, lifelong learning, it's something everybody wants to do more of. So last year I set a goal to read 52 books. If you're new here, I'm Joshua Hansen, and on this channel, I give you the essential insights from the world's best business books in seven minutes or less. So be sure to subscribe so you never miss an update. So as I said in the intro, last year I set a goal to read 52 books, which was one book a week, and I actually achieved it. Now this was more books than I had ever read in one year, and I must say, the effect was transformative. I was thinking more clearly, I was having more ideas, I was developing in areas I just can't even describe. My life is so much better for having set and met that goal. So in this video, I wanna share with you my four key strategies that helped me reach my goal so that hopefully they can help you reach your reading goal. So I must say I had two rules for every book that I was gonna read last year. Number one, it had to be a book that I actually wanted to read. I couldn't read a book just because it was fast that I didn't actually wanna read just so I could chalk it up to my numbers. And number two, it had to be a book that I was actually going to benefit and get some value out of. Again, I wasn't just reading children's books just so I could reach 52. It had to be something that was actually gonna add value to my life. So strategy number one was to read books that I was intensely interested in. Now reading 52 books a year, of course one book a week, is a pretty intense reading goal. So I knew in order to reach that goal I had to find books that would keep me engaged and keep me coming back for more week after week after week. So when it became difficult to meet this goal and continue to read at this pace, I needed the books to help me, to keep encouraging me and bringing me back for more so that I could keep going. So if you're trying to meet your reading goal, I recommend trying to think two or three books ahead so that as soon as you finish one, you know what the next one's going to be and it's one that you're intensely interested in reading. Strategy number two seems obvious, but I was focused on books that I could actually read, I could start and finish in a week. Now I found for me that the number of pages which made for a good book for this goal was between 250 and 320 pages. Essentially uh, about this thick. So most of these uh, books here are between 250 and 300 pages. So you can see these are actually really valuable books that were about the length I wanted to have so I could make sure that I finished in a week. Now I was trying to read on average about 40 pages a day which really was me just finding about 15 minutes four times a day to read about 10 pages each time. So if you break it down into small steps like that, it seems a lot easier. But what I found was if I finished one book that was a little bit shorter, maybe a 250 page book, and I was able to finish that maybe in five or six days, then I was able to use the extra day or two to maybe read a little bit longer book, maybe a 300 or 320 page book. Strategy number three, audiobooks. Now audiobooks were an essential add to my reading goal, hands down, one of the best things that I did last year. Now in the past I was really kind of poo-poo on audiobooks and I was like, oh if you listen to an audiobook you didn't actually read the book, you listened to the book, you didn't really read it. Well forget that, not gatekeeping anymore, that was a ridiculous thing to think, a ridiculous thing to say. Listening to an audiobook is reading a book. If the objective of reading is to get the ideas and information from the author's head into your head, then listening to an audiobook is just as effective as reading a book. Now the way I thought about it is perhaps I am retaining a little bit less from an audiobook than I am from a physical book, but I found that if I was able to consume more books, even if I was retaining a smaller percentage, I'm still retaining a lot of information. So what I found is if I had a book I was physically reading and a book I was listening to, I was able to kind of double my speed and uh, perhaps not spend so much time physically reading a book, which could be very tiring, I was able to supplement that by listening as well. So if I was on a long car trip, or I was driving to work, or I was out cutting the yard, instead of listening to podcasts or music, I was listening to an audiobook, which really, I must tell you, was absolutely transformative. One of the best apps I found for listening to audiobooks is an app called Hoopla, which is available through most of your libraries. It is absolutely free and has thousands and thousands of books available that you can download right to your phone and listen to. Now for this, I found the sweet spot for me was about six to eight hours. That was kind of the good uh, sort of time frame that I looked for in an audiobook to make sure that I could finish it in a week. But I also listened to my audiobooks on two to two and a half times speed, which made it a little bit easier. Strategy number four is Kindle. Again, absolutely essential. I put it on par with the audiobook in terms of importance. So this is my Kindle here. Again, absolute game changer. Something I wish I would have done a long time ago. I used to be a purist and only read paper books 
and uh, was down on audiobooks, down on e-readers and you know electronic books. It was just something I just wasn't going to get into because I liked physical books. I was never going to move away from physical books. But I will tell you, a Kindle has a number of advantages to help you meet your reading goals. Number one, it has one of the advantages of an actual physical book. It is a single use device. When you're on your Kindle, you can only read books. And it's so nice because I used to try to use my iPad to read eBooks and I would be reading for five or 10 minutes. I'm like, you know what? I wonder what's happening on Facebook or I saw a Twitter notification just come in or who I really got to hop in this game real quick and collect my gold. I love that I cannot do that on a Kindle. I can stay focused and I'm not going to get distracted by any notifications because it's just not even available. Another thing I liked about the Kindle is I found a lot lower resistance while reading in my Kindle. If I opened it up, it was right on the page where I left off and I was able to start reading immediately. It's much easier to carry with me wherever I go. I'm always worried about my books getting bent up or the pages getting messed up, uh, but I found carrying my Kindle around, I didn't have to worry about that. So I was much more likely to carry it with me. So I had it on hand at all time in case I found a few minutes that I could use to read. Along that path of thinking, it has cross device syncing. So what's nice is I can read on my Kindle to a certain point and if I'm stuck in traffic or I'm uh, at a restaurant waiting for someone, I can pull out my phone and it will sync to my last point read on my Kindle and I can just read a few pages on my Kindle while I, on my Kindle app on my phone while I have a couple of minutes. And then again, if I find myself in, in a time, I can pull up my laptop or my iPad and it's all synced across all my devices. Another great thing about Kindle is having multiple books with you at all times. When you have your Kindle, if you're reading a book for 10 or 20 minutes and you find you're getting a little bored of the subject and you really don't feel like reading that particular author or that particular topic at that point. It's a few clicks and now you're reading a whole new book that you might be more interested in, which might grab your attention for longer. So you can continue reading for another 10 or 20 minutes, which really helps you move towards that goal. Now, there are many other advantages of reading on a Kindle, such as highlights, but I would love to go deeper on that topic in another video. If you wanna know how I take notes from the things that I read that helps me remember everything, comment below and I'll be sure to make that video. Now reading and taking notes takes intense focus and attention. So watch this video to learn how to conserve your attention and focus so that you can work at a much deeper level. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.